I think you're going to start to really hear a lot more about smart objects in Photoshop CS2 because it really, really offers some great possibilities. What I've done here is I have another document that actually is made up of multiple layers that was placed into this one and made a smart object, as you can see from this layer. If I were to double click on that, I can open up the original to show you. It's a photo layer with an adjustment layer and a series of type layers. Okay, so we'll just close that up just so you see what that looks like. And you can see back here that it actually is multiple layers. Well, here's one thing that, that we have discovered that's a little odd. I'm going to give a very subtle yet blatant commercial. I've just been finishing off a book that I'm writing called the Photoshop CS2 Help Desk Book. And one of the questions we were addressing was this. When you add a layer mask to a smart object, for some reason, it's not linked together. And you cannot simply click in the middle to link it. It just doesn't work. So here's what happens. We use this layer mask, for example, to hide portions of the smart object, as layer masks are meant to do, which is great. Except here's the problem now. If I take my Move tool and try to move them both together, I cannot because they're not linked. So I either have to move one and then move the other. There's just no way to do it. We've tried, believe me, and many different capabilities or possibilities. It just doesn't work. Now, there is one option that I came up with that I think is an interesting solution to this. I'm going to take the layer mask and throw it away. What I'm going to do is add a levels adjustment layer and I'm just going to click OK without even looking at it because really what this lets me do is use the layer mask. So I'm going to take this adjustment layer, drag it down below the smart object. Then I either have to go to this top layer and use this command create clipping mask or I could press Command Option or Control Alt G, or I could also position my mouse on the borderline between those two layers, hold down the Option Alt key, and click once. And all this really is allowing me to do is if I now click on the layer mask associated with levels, remember I'm not really using the levels, I'm just taking advantage of the mask. Now I can use this like a regular layer mask so that I can, again, just like I did before, paint on this to hide the parts that I want and if as in there my brush was too big and I did a lousy job I can show back some of the parts that are missing but here's the difference now in CS2 in order to move layers at the same time you simply have to select them both so I just hold on the shift key make sure both layers were selected and now when I use the move tool I can very easily move it to a different position and of course if there's something about it I can don't like I still have the layer mask so I can still adjust it further but it's still a smart object. So if I take this layer and double click on it, it still brings me back to my original. So for example, I could use my hue saturation adjustment layer to try a slightly different color, maybe more saturated and a little darker. Click OK. Close it and save it. And you'll see it updates in here automatically, including the fake kind of layer mask created by making this clipping mask with a layer mask. So it's a little bit of a workaround, but I think you'll find once you get used to it, it actually works very well and takes full advantage of the way that smart objects work. Hey, this is Dave Cross. Thanks for watching that tip, and I apologize for throwing in that little reference to a, a book because, you know, that really was kind of inappropriate to make reference to a book that's not even available yet. But So, you know, I apologize for mentioning the Photoshop CS2 Help Desk book coming soon to a bookstore near you. Thanks for watching. See you next week.